The knife is a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 in S110V steel, CPM S110V, steel made by Crucible, uh, extremely high carbide content. Spyderco uses uh, CPM S110V quite a bit. Um, Paramilitary 2 is one of the more popular models that they use it in. I had picked this up and uh, a few weeks ago, maybe, well, maybe a few months ago, I, this was due to be sharpened. Um, I don't carry it a, a terribly large amount, um, but I went ahead and sharpened it using uh, diamond and ceramic for stones and then diamond loaded straps. And after sharpening the knife, caught a piece of footage, uh, whittling hair that was, uh, was extremely impressive. The, I mean, the edge on it was extremely impressive. I was very happy with it. And the piece of footage that I caught was, uh, was really great. This is that piece of footage. So after catching that piece of footage and posting it on the groups, um, or at least on Spyderco, I was having a conversation with a gentleman, and I think it was in a different group, I think it was in Edge Snobs, and he, we were talking, we were talking about the progression that I use, uh, used for the knife, and I think he was just thinking out loud, but he said, isn't that stone, the ultrafine stone, stone alumina based? And if so, it's, it's not as hard as vanadium carbide. So theoretically, you should have vanadium uh, carbide tear out, which he's right. I mean, in theory, you should. So, and all he was saying was, and you know, it wasn't, it, again, I think he was just thinking out loud, but he said, imagine if you did a full diamond sharpening on the knife, I wonder if the, if the performance would be better. And that stuck with me. Um, Sometimes just that suggestion, just a question is all it takes. So after that, uh, less than a week after that, I was carrying the knife and using it and uh, hit a point in a day where I was uh, chipping away at uh, laminate wood, taking off odds and ends and just, you know, just had the knife with me. And I ended up with chipping in the blade. Now, I wasn't sure if this was from the wood or if I had run into a nail at some point in the the use that I was putting the knife through that day but I did have chips in the blade and so between the carbide conversation you know on top of the full diamond sharpening conversation and then finding chips in the blade I thought okay well chips in the blade I wonder if it's a knife I wonder if it was just an oddball thing if I caught a piece of wood at a funny angle or if I did hit a nail but I wasn't sure so I decided to you know kind of investigate it and Try different different types of sharpening with S110V. I mean, it's it's an extremely high carbide steel, extremely high vanadium content, and um, this isn't my favorite model in the world because of the uh, the color of the handle. I'm not. I mean, it's it's very close to purple, and that's that's not something that uh, I'm going to be looking to carry every day. There's a lot of situations where it's it's simply not what I want to have in my pocket. Um. So, be that as it is, I'm not afraid to make this a work knife. I mean, I appreciate the knife and the performance of it, but I'll use it at times where I really want to, to put a knife through high use without a whole lot of concern for what happens to it. Not to mention the fact that Spyderco has made this. I mean, this is production. So, if I destroy this knife and later I decide I just I have to have one, can't live without it, I can always get another. It's not a problem. So, I mean, really, I put this knife through a lot of heavy use, uh, a lot of work. Uh, enough that, uh, I mean, I worked the primary grind on the knife to keep it thinned out. Um, so, over the next, you know, after that, and after finding the chips on the blade, over the next, I don't know, six to eight weeks, I was putting the knife through different sharpenings and then using it on the weekends. 
and looking at the performance, looking for chipping, looking for uh, a degradation or, or whatever I could find. Doing sharpenings with, you know, just diamond. No, you know, you're, you're talking about a lot of refining that you're missing at the end of the sharpening there. And how does the knife perform and, and how well does it work? And then trying to do full diamond sharpenings where I'm trying to get it as sharp as I can when I've got that ceramic stone in the mix. Uh, I narrowed down my the the possible options and i did get the knife to an extreme you know doing a full diamond sharpening uh, i found that if you use a lot of strops at the end and start very high uh very large uh, uh micron size compound you can get the and then work your way down you can get the knife extremely sharp doing a full diamond sharpening uh, i wanted to test it i wanted to see is there a performance difference between a full diamond sharpening and then a sharpening with a ceramic stone in it. Now, that being said, I know that using ceramic stones, using too much ceramic stones causes a problem. Uh, in, in these weeks, there were times where I used just shaptons on the knife, you know, alumina-based water stones, and it didn't work out. I mean, you can, you can sharpen S110V with shaptons it'll get sharper if it's really dull, but it never really takes that really high level of sharpness that you get using diamond. Um, and I, I mean, I've tried more than once and it just doesn't work out. Whereas if you do something like ZDP or XHP that doesn't have a whole ton of vanadium in it or any vanadium at all, you get a much different result with those steels. Um, but I was also trying different alumina based finishing stones. Uh, not just the ceramic. I, I worked with a, a 20k Suhiro and that did that did good. That did good as a finishing stone. Um, I was I was trying different things to see what I liked best, and I didn't have I, I don't have the time and the materials to to do every single thing that I found to be successful and and go into all that. But going through the sharpening the way I've been doing it with diamond stones. And then Spider Co Ultra Fine, and then Strops, and then taking the Ultra Fine out of it and going through with diamonds, and then a larger amount of Strops. And I tried it different ways with the Strops. I mean, there was there was some sharpenings where I started at ten micron, somewhere I started at seven, um, somewhere I started at five, <clears throat> just to see if I could see the difference and how far could I take it sharpening the knife and what would the end result be um, after the fact. What I figured would happen was. Going into it, my my guess was that the the ceramic would have some carbide tear out, but it would get the knife sharper. The full diamond wouldn't wouldn't have an end result that was as sharp, but there would be no carbide tear out. So the question as to which one would have better performances, um, the increase that you're going to get from a sharper knife versus the decrease you're going to get from some carbide tear out and of course then the question is how much carbide tear out how much are we talking about how much is that going to impact the knife and maybe that even comes down to i mean not only how you're going about the sharpening but what you're cutting after the fact i mean it can get really detailed at any rate i try to make it as simple as possible and just see if i could see a drastic difference you know put it through one test and see if there's a huge difference and if there is, okay, fine, then we know it. And if there's not, if it's pretty close or if it's, you know, then all right, fine. So for this test, I did a full diamond sharpening using diamond plates. Um, after the plates, I worked with this uh, DMT dipole sharpener just because this extra, extra fine, which I've got on a plate, is, uh, it's extremely worn in and it's... Because it's so worn in, um, I think it gives a finer uh, diamond-based edge than I'll get off of uh, off of the plate that I've got. After the diamond stones plates, I moved on to uh, diamond-based strops. Um, it was a fairly long progression of strops, and I finished at 0 .005 micron which is as far as I can take it. That's 3.2 million grit. Um, the knife was was hair whittling sharp, no question about it. Um, the edge felt good. 
not quite as much bite on it as when I use ceramic, but a very, very good edge nonetheless. Um, and I ran through the test cutting cardboard using about one inch of blade towards the bottom of the blade. Um, the amount that, that that diamond sharpening cut on, on this cardboard, and this was pretty heavy cardboard, was 935 inches. So 935 inches of cardboard cut, push cutting, before the knife would stop shaving hair. Interesting thing that I did after the fact, just kind of messing around, I, I took a block of wood and it was just pine wood, it was just laying around and using the upper part of the blade, I went after it with the knife, just working into it. I wanted to see could I get chipping on the blade. Now pine isn't the same as laminate wood, but laminate wood is strange, you don't really run into that all that much, so I felt like pine made more sense. So I went after the pine cutting into it, and I didn't get any chipping or any problem with it. Afterwards, I noticed that the, the knife was still sharp. And in fact, I noticed that it was still hair whittling. Um, which, for the amount of wood that I cut, but I mean, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not out there being a lumberjack, but it was still a good amount of cutting into wood for people's arguments against taking a, a knife edge this far and that it's not necessary and it doesn't lead to anything uh, after the first few cuts. So at any rate, that was what it was. I then sharpened the knife again using diamond plates and went from coarse to fine, extra fine, extra, extra fine, and then moved to the Spyderco Ultra Fine Stone. I worked with that stone, uh, raising a burr several times on that stone from one side to the next. I like to go through that stone an extra time so burr on one side burr on the other and instead of moving on then I'll do I'll raise a burr again on each side and then a couple of uh, burr reduction strokes and then moving on to straps again starting with diamond straps I mean diamond straps are what I'm gonna I'm not gonna not use diamond straps but it's not with this it's not as many there's more jumping around with the uh, with the straps and skipping steps um, the straps for both sharpenings were, were wood and leather, starting out with wood, uh, a couple leather straps in there, and ending with .005 micron again. Again, the edge was hair whittling sharp, no question about it. Uh, the edge that comes up from this, from that particular sharpening is, is a very good edge, it, it works very well. Again, I went through the tests cutting the same cardboard, um, same part of the knife, uh, same amount of blade, same type of cuts, and I was I was within 10 to 20 inches of the other sharpening before it would stop shaving hair. Um, this might have been that the, the sharpening with the ceramic might have been 10 inches off, which is I mean that's nothing if you're talking about 900 plus inches. That much difference is is negligible that could be anything that could be something with the sharpening something with the cardboard something with me testing to see if the knife is still cutting hair so my point is the result was so close that I, I don't I don't know I mean I'm sure that there's some carbide tear out happening with the ceramic stone but being that I'm just using it as a finishing stone and it's an ultra fine stone it's a negligible amount and it's it's really not I don't think it's something to, to worry about with the knife. Again, after that, I went after a piece of pine just to see, could we cause chipping? Does does the use of, the, if there is any carbide tear out, does it weaken the apex? Um, so again, I went after a piece of pine, cutting into it. Um, after the fact, there, there wasn't any chipping uh, and the knife was still fairly sharp. I mean, this, it, it's it'll still shave hair up here on this part of the blade. It's not hair whittling, it, hair whittling towards the tip, but that if I try to present that as, as an argument for it, that would be, I'd be lying. This was what was getting used most on the wood, not the tip. Um, although I don't think it's very far from hair whittling. And there was a few times in cutting the wood where I made a sideways movement and I felt the edge drag sideways. And that, that alone could easily take the, uh, take the very apex off the knife and, make you lose that that 
hair whittling edge. I would need to do this over and over again with the pine to see. But we did have the first time where I was. it was a full diamond sharpening, and after the fact went after the pine, and after that it was hair whittling sharp. So that's a plenty good argument uh, for, for taking an edge that far. Um, so it was interesting. It was an interesting test. The, uh, the full diamond with ceramic as opposed to not ceramic, it obviously doesn't make a difference. Um, really what I was looking for was a major difference in the performance, and it's just not there. I think that the more, the more alumina-based stones you use, the more problem you get. So if you're starting with, your, if your core stone is alumina-based, and you're working your way down through alumina stones, then you'll probably see a difference, maybe. But with this, just using a, a, a ultra fine or extra fine alumina based stone at the end, I, I just I don't think that it's causing enough of a problem to see a difference in the result. But the wood was interesting. I mean, to everybody who says you know see, sees an uh, edge of hair whittling and says, oh yeah, but you know that goes away after the first few cuts that's gone, and there's just no point in taking it that far. Well, here you go. Here's a, here's an argument against that showing that a few cuts into into wood even if it's just pine it's still wood and that hair whittling edge is is still there and it means you're that much farther from dull i mean wherever you go from there however however far you take the edge the knife edge however sharp you get it is how far you are from dull from it going dull through use so, I mean, that's, to me, that's my argument in my own, in my own mind about taking it that far. That, and if you're going to be a sharpener, I mean, why the, the natural tendency is to take it as far as you possibly can. So, and that, that there will explain the, give the explanation for the behavior. But interesting, interesting tests, interesting model. It's a good work knife. You, you really got to love the PM2, the Ergos. Um, and I found myself enjoying this model because of the uh, amount of use that I've put it through.